morning, everyone. So in the midst of this snowy January weather, we gather to give thanks to God, to give praise to God. This is the week of prayer for Christian unity, that we pray for the unity of all the divided churches that we can somehow come together. So we'll pray the Mass for Christian unity today. So let's begin by just opening our hearts to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that always wants to draw us together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We call upon the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you pour out on us your spirit of unity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you desire to draw us to yourself and to draw us to one another. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the source of all forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. When David and Saul approached on David's return after slaying the Philistine, women came out from each of the cities of Israel to meet King Saul, singing and dancing with tambourines, joyful songs, and citrums. The women played and sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry and resentful of the song, for he thought, they give David tens thousands, but only thousands to me. All that remains for him is the kingship. And from that day on, Saul was jealous of David. Saul discussed his intention of killing David with his son Jonathan and with all his servants. But Saul's son Jonathan, who was very fond of David, told him, my father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard tomorrow morning. Get out of sight and remain in hiding. I, however, will go out and stand beside my father in the countryside where you are and will speak to him about you. If I learn anything, I will let you know. Jonathan then spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, let not your majesty sin against his servant David, for he has committed no offense against you, but he has helped you very much by his deeds. When he took his life in his hands and slew the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel to see through him, you were glad to see it. Why then should you become guilty of shedding innocent blood by killing David without cause. Saul heeded Jonathan's plea and swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. So Jonathan summoned David and repeated the whole conversation to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul and David served him as before. The word of the Lord. 
the responsorial psalm. In God I trust, I shall not fear. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for men trample upon me. All the day they press their attack against me. My adversaries trample upon me all the day. Yes, many fight against me. In God I trust, I shall not fear. My wanderings you have counted, my tears are stored in your flask. Are they not recorded in your book? Then do my enemies turn back when I call upon you. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Now I know that God is with me, in God in whose promise I glory, in God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? In God I trust, I shall not fear. I am bound, O oh God, by your vows to you, that thank offerings I will fulfill. For you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. In God I trust, I shall not fear. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus withdrew toward the sea with his disciples. A large number of people followed from Galilee and from Judea. Hearing what he was doing, a large number of people came to him also from Jerusalem, from Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan and from the neighborhood of Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. He had cured many, and as a result, those who had diseases were pressing upon him to touch him. And whenever unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. He warned them sternly not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Way back in the 1960s, Pope, Pope John the 23rd was taking some people on a tour of the Vatican and one of his friends asked him, how many people work in the Vatican? And Pope John the Twenty Third thought for a minute. He said, oh, "About half of them." <laughs> when I was in Rome, I remember talking to somebody who knew uh, the Vatican well, and he said, "You have to understand that some people here are not interested in having a job; they're interested in having a position. And as long as they have the position, whether they do the job or not, mm, doesn't really matter. It's kind of an odd thing." But it's exactly what Saul is falling into as we read through the book of Samuel. He becomes more interested in keeping his job than in doing his job. He is tempted by jealousy, basically. He's annoyed because of this song that people are singing and that, that David is getting a higher rating than Saul is, and so out of jealousy, he begins this animosity with David. Rather than thinking of the common good, rather than thinking that David has helped win a victory over their enemy, all he thinks about is, is this guy more popular than me? Jealousy begins to crowd out his real job, which is to bring people together, to lead the people, to shepherd the people of Israel. And even though his son Jonathan kind of um, convinces him not to uh, kill David, this is the beginning of an animosity that's going to continue. He's more interested in keeping his job than doing his job. Unfortunately, we can look throughout the world and see leaders who fall into this 
this temptation. And unfortunately, even in our own country, um, there are people who are more interested in keeping their jobs than doing their jobs, caring for the common good. So perhaps we should look at ourselves too and see how sometimes jealousy can weed its way into our hearts. Somebody told me that when you compare yourself with somebody else, it's an act of violence. When you compare yourself with somebody else, even in little things, this person does this better than I do, this person looks better than I do, whatever it is, whenever those comparisons and jealousies begin to come into our hearts, we begin to forget to do our jobs as Christians, which is to be the presence of Jesus in the world today. So as we pray for Christian unity this week, let's ask God to unify us, unify our hearts, and to be more concerned with the common good than with whatever jealousies may crowd into our hearts, that we may be more like Jesus, who in the gospel we see is just pure compassion for people, and healing goes out from him because of this compassion. Jesus is concerned with doing his job, which is to fulfill the will of his Father, to do his job to bring about the kingdom of God. So let's offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church. We pray for all of our Christian brothers and sisters in the divided churches that we may focus on what we have in common, our belief in Jesus, our common baptism, and that we may work together for unity and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the church. We pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for the leaders of our country that they may always keep in mind the common good and work together to care especially for the least and the littlest. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who don't have the basic needs in life. We pray for those who don't have adequate housing during this cold weather. We pray for those who are poor that people may reach out to help them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who trust in our prayers. Mass today is offered for Daniela Lima, that Daniela may continue to be blessed with life and love. For all those who ask for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, pray for those who need God's healing, all those we know who are sick, those suffering from COVID. We pray for Suzanne, for baby Jack, for Mason, for Kyle, that God's healing would be with them. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, our loved ones who have died, all those who have gone before us, that God may welcome them into the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold within our hearts, let's pause for a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you are the source of all unity, the source of all goodness. We ask you to look upon our needs, receive our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for your praise and glorious name, for our good and for the alms for the church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously upon us the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism, we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all the nations, so that in a wondrous manner he might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that we share with all Christians. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life.
us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those who believe in you one in mind and heart by the power of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Take care. Keep warm. <laughs>